Lemon Amiga present. A play child video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Again, this time it's another play guide and review, and we're gonna be checking out Oil Imperium, otherwise known as Black Gold, published by Reline Software in 1989. Oil Imperium was designed and coded by P. Bonner, Thomas Kruser, and A. Graf von der Schauenberg. And it's a German company, as you can tell, this was a German production. The graphics were by a certain Tobias Richter, who'd already created the Agatron series, you might remember, the Lightwave productions in the public domain, and he also produced a Star Trek game. So definitely remember Tobias Richter, and this was a German publishing group. This review goes out to Bloxyman22, so thank you Bloxyman for sponsoring this review. At the start of Oil Imperium, we get to choose our players, let's choose just the one player, and it's just me, damn, let's just put my name in, and let's go for the first of several oil companies that we can go for. Trans Oil or Trans Oil, whatever that is, and we also get to choose our office as well. It gives us a rough picture of our office, and it also gives us you might notice there is it looks like an Amiga 1000 in the office, it looks like maybe an Amiga 3000 in this office, and you can see there is no Amigas I can find in that one. and Let's check it out, maybe there's an Amiga 2000, or maybe it's a 4000 in this one, and it's quite modern as you can see. But let's just go for, well look at that, there's another one as well, let's just go for this one, and it's got a nice roaring fire in the background, it's nice and warm, and that's definitely what I need coming from Lancashire, so let's select that. Okay, and then we can select our mission, the best after three years, that means the most money and the most profit, or more than 60 million in capital, or you can ruin all the other players or 8% of the market. Let's go for the first one, it's Dan versus the computer, the computer and the computer. So here we are, we get a starting capital of 5 million credits in the bank, and at the start of the game it gives us lots of unlabeled buttons. I absolutely adore unlabeled buttons, and you will hopefully be getting used to what all of them do. And so let's click on the first one, we can see an Amiga workbench. And from here we get a map of the world, and we can drill anywhere in the world and drill for oil. Yes, if this is an oil simulator, we'll be drilling for oil and making profit out of that. And I'm so glad that at least it wasn't a football manager sim that Eric Johnson sponsored for this review. So let's select one of the cheaper areas and we can gain a rough idea of the live land and that will cost us a bit of money. And it says, well, the only, it's not used at the moment. The price will cost us a fortune and it's not going to cost us that much to run, but we are going to get 65,000 per barrel from that. So 65,000 per barrel, it's not a great deal to be honest. Let's check out somewhere else in Alaska and I definitely recommend Alaska as a start because that's full of oil. You can see this is worth 83,000 a barrel. The running costs are virtually the same but it's going to cost 1.2 million to buy it. So having looked at the oil field we can now buy ourselves a tank. And this doesn't come with a barrel and you can't fire it at the enemies, it's a tank to hold oil. And so we can choose the number and the type. So we've got a recycled one, a metal one, a high tech one, and of course the high tech you go, the longer they'll last and the more protection they've got, but I can't afford it, so I'm going for two of these recycled ones, which gives me a total capacity of one million barrels. 
And let's put that in Alaska. Returning back to workbench, we can now click on the oil field in Alaska and as long as we remember which one we chose, we can now buy that land and it's going to cost us 2 million quid, that's fine, let's just go for that and now that is ours and it doesn't give you much at this stage to tell you that it's ours but we can now drill that well and it says yep, it's going to be another 1.2 million to drill it are you sure you want to drill? Yes, we are sure that we want to drill. Then he'll give us a final option, drill on your own or employ somebody. Let's do it on our own. Then what will happen is we move into a mini game where we can move our joystick and you can see a scanner in the top right corner. We have to move the joystick and we have to keep that in the very middle of that scanner in order to drill down to the oil. Drilling successful, that's taken us five days, it's cost us even more money, so now having spent all of that five million then we get a chance to go for the car. In the meantime, what have we got? Supply contract. Occasionally we'll get guys ringing us up on the telephone. Supply contract to Transoil. And in the Gulf region, probably the Gulf region, but I'm not in the Gulf region at the moment, so I'm not sure if we can apply for that supply contract. And by clicking on the date, that ends our turn. So just like civilization, we now get to end our turn. And all the computer does its stuff. Actions. Last month, what happened? Well, Transoil bought itself one wells and two tanks. And All American has bought two wells and one tank. Well, that's great stuff. It gives us a rough idea of how much cash is floating around and there isn't much available. We've now been running for one month in this game. Let's have a look at the exports and let's yet again explore the map. And by clicking on these regions, we can get an idea of what it's worth. So this one's worth 1.4 million. The ring costs double, but we're going to get 47,000 a barrel. That's not really worth it. And so let's buy some more expertise. What else have we got? 1.3 million, 50,000 a barrel. It's not even worth looking at that site if it's only worth 50,000 a barrel. So continuing, Alaska is fairly cheap and it's heavily packed with oil. So that's definitely the one that I'd recommend at the start of the game. So moving through Alaska, the hardest part is to find a good one and then memorize where that is. And so this one's fairly cheap. It's fairly cheap to run and it's 85,000 credits per barrel. So let's go for that and hopefully remember where that is. So that's the export report. We can now sell the oil that we've got already because we're gonna to have to earn some money. Let's sell the oil and let's sell all the oil that we've managed to drill so far. That will give us almost a million in profit and we can change that obviously using the arrow keys. After that, I think we're going to have to end that turn again because you can only do so much during one turn and if you don't, it tells you, well, you can also see on this menu there is a contract screen and there is also the legend as well. You can see the map from any point and check out any area of the map, any point, and fortunately it's not telling us anything about our own oil field. And by checking out the newspaper, we get to see there's a boom in oil price. That's great for us. That means that the oil will be worth a lot. Checking out our drawers, we'll be coming back to this a lot later on. Top secret actions can be done, but we can't really afford much at this stage. We've got 1.6 million in the bank. 
Do you really want us to end your turn? Yes, we really do. Unfortunately, that means that we're going to be paying out for a lot more workers during that time and running those oil fields in that time. So when we return back to our home screen, we'll usually find that our money value has gone down. It's actually gone up at the moment. I not quite know why, but let's sell the oil that we've now managed to get. And we've got another 44,000 barrels. Let's sell it off. And there's a boom in the oil price that gives us hopefully the 2 million that we need to drill for our second oil well. And it's great that all this is in Workbench, of course, Workbench 1.3. So this was released in 1989, so just before Workbench 2 came out. So what am I doing? Hopefully, yes, there it is. I'm drilling in the right place. Will you buy this land? It's going to cost you a million. Yes, we'll do it. Well, do you want to drill? Yes, we'll do it. Do you want to drill it on your own? Yes, we'll do it. And now we get to drill for the oil again. See, we're drilling through layers of sand and sediment and rock and of course the firmness and the pressure will change as we get through all those layers making trying to center the joystick in the middle quite a lot more difficult. Now that that's done, we're going to have to end our turn again. You can see the profits have now gone down, but we've now drilled our second well. Hopefully that's good for us. And the computer, well, it makes its moves. I don't really need to read those. You can see we've now bought another well. So we can click on any time in this mouse-driven game onto the next scenario we've got precious little cash left so let's switch on the computer again and let's sell of course the oil that we've managed to accumulate from last time because we've had to pay for that and drill that and employ the workers to get it for us and look at that now two million barrels of oil Unfortunately, there's been a problem and we're going to have to do that manually and that's pretty difficult as you'll see later on. We've now got two million. What are we going to do? Yes, we're going to back to the research report and we're going to research somewhere else. That's now two oil wells in black hopefully drilling the black gold and yes this was released as oil imperium in germany and it was released as black gold the year later that's basically as far as i know the english translation or maybe even the american import and i'm not quite sure but maybe that was even the ntsc version but black gold not that many people have heard of that and not so many people have heard of oil imperium either so looks like we're going to drill another well and we can't afford that so let's do it on our own again and sometimes it can be pretty difficult because if that red thing is moving down you have to push up on the controller left and right and that kind of thing so what i like to do is to move the entire controller in a circle and you can see it's pretty firm now in this part of alaska and it's a snowy rocky mountain region so it's going to take us quite some time to drill right at the bottom we get to the oil and you can see there isn't much of it right at the bottom so we are going to get some and it is going to cost a lot but unfortunately it's not going to last very long so that's the third drilled and if you click on games, of course, what does that do? Well, we might come back to that. Games, well, it gives us a guru meditation. Software failure, ring that number. And that's another joke on behalf of those German coders. So let's have a look at those stat screens. Transoil, it's much of a muchness, really, but I'm at the bottom of the capital ladder, unfortunately, starting this year. And we're now in April. 
And so we are right at the bottom, but that's pretty good because having three wells on the go hopefully should mean that we're going to get quite some money in. That ends our turn, and just like all good strategy games, it's a turn-based game, and there are four other, well, three other players on the map, four including us. So it's unfortunate that you can't click on much on that picture in the background, but we can click on our Amiga. Let's click on the oil. We've moved another turn, so let's sell that 2,000. Barrels. How much do we get for that? It's gone up again. We're now getting three million profit for that. Uh oh, there are some problems. You can see it's a race against time against that other computer and I'm playing this on an Amiga 3000 or 30 that's my default setup that's what I'm playing it on so these screens move pretty smoothly and quickly the downside of that is that the computer will move pretty darn quickly on that bonus stage or at least the stage where we get the oil and that means it's pretty difficult unless you know exactly what you're doing and that reminds me of course of pipe mania or whatever that was known as on the conversions. Pipe Mania, of course, came out on the Amiga where we could move liquids around in a pipe. So look at this, we're now trying to drill on the cost. It's gonna cost us a fortune to buy it, a fortune to run it, but it's worth 160, 160,000 credits per barrel. So that's double what we're getting at the moment. Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to pay double for it so hopefully that'll balance out and i'm not quite sure how much of it there is to drill through but that's definitely a possibility we can explore the coastal area and let's check this one out it's still big books to buy it for 1.2 million credits and which one do we go for and it's pretty difficult to decide sometimes we spend all of that cash. We're now drilling down all the way through Alaska at this point. You can see status, okay, critical, okay, critical, okay, no, it's critical again. Gives us tons and tons and tons and tons more oil. So that's taking us another five days. We've now got ourselves an offshore oil platform. And we're drilling in the mountains and drilling in the flatlands and we're drilling high and low in this game. And explorer tanks have burned down. Oh dear, that's a shame. One of our competitors is taking a dive. So let's finish that turn. We're now taken over Canada at this point and we've now got tons of money and it looks like we're third now in the runnings according to that cash piled up which is good third in the runnings we've now only got 1.1 million so of course sell the oil is the first priority at the start of every turn let's sell every single drop of that for as much as it can be and the oil prices are amazing look at that it's still 3 million but we found some more problems and if we don't fix these problems in time and get ourselves to that destination, guess what that'll mean? Well, that means that we lose every single cent of that oil. What a fiasco. No oil sold. Everything is drained into the Egyptian desert. So unfortunately, Sorry, there's no oil. It's already been wasted this month. You've got anything to sell. And so, unfortunately, that's just it. You can have to skip a turn, lose a turn, and go down the snake, drop down, and hopefully you can find a ladder later on. So, before we end this turn, what we're going to do, it looks like we're going to buy number five. And I don't really want to be prospecting too much on the coast because it's costly and very costly in fact but you can see there are rich rewards 
and if we build next to the oil fields that we've already built that will give us a subsidy and when we enter a new territory we'll have to pay a fortune maybe two million just to be able to buy land in that territory then we'll have to buy the land that will cost us maybe another one or two million and then we'll have to drill that land and that's going to cost us maybe another million so you have to have maybe five million in store in order to move countries and to set up shop somewhere else but there are pros and cons if you mine too much oil out of this area then the price will go down and having the price going down when you are running out of oil everywhere is not such a good thing to do so really it's best to milk as much as you can out of maybe five or six oil wells in that region unless it's got competitors in it and of course if there are competitors in your region it means the price will go up so at the moment there is nobody in Alaska apart from me uh oh trans oil fields in flames that means that we're going to have to send out a rescue guy an agent and he will parachute down and try to put out that fire By moving to the well and hopefully holding down that fire button it will eventually drop something that's actually a stick of dynamite you can see the fuse at the top of the screen and if we are anywhere near that blast when it goes off we'll lose one of the three health hearts you can see in the top corner and you can see that we have a limited amount of dynamite that we can use it looks like quite a bit of it got used up in that particular room So there's over half of it now being destroyed because of the oil fire. One of those oil wells is dried up in Alaska, so we're going to have to remember that and check that out next time because if one of the wells dries up then of course that's one big loss to our inventory so let's check out the computer uh, let's check out maybe the report or well no let's obviously sell the oil first of all because we didn't get much last time we've now got half a million barrels of oil to sell let's get rid of that and because the oil price is so rich at this point look at that it's worth six million Then all we need to do is once again return back to Cairo and in the Egyptian desert apparently we're supposed to get this oil moving and if they'd have drawn a few more of these different types of screens instead of just the desert one we could have had a forest one and a mountain one and that would have covered most of the regions on this planet but seeing this desert scenario every single time is a bit lazy and it takes us away from the reality and the realism but the reality is if we right click on one of the pipes that we've just placed down that same icon will then be removed and then if we left click on the right one the one that we're supposed to select or the one that we want left click on that and then that means that that will be laid down so you can see that the enemy the computer has made a right mess of it and they're now stuck in that corner that's the good news the bad news is we're still struggling to get through this and if it wasn't for that we would have just lost six million credits worth of oil that's fantastic and the stakes are mega high at this point and hopefully we've remembered that one of these oil wells run dry it looks like that's the green one and if you try to sell the green one and try and get your money back on it well it's a dead oil field who wants to buy that and it's a mountainous region as well so as far as i know if you try to sell any of these things it will come up with the box of how much you want to sell it for and you can obviously use those arrow keys to sell it for as much as you want and so that can work but if it's a dead oil field then it's not going to be bought by any other oil companies 
and it's a dead oil field. Nobody wants to spend money knocking it down. So, fortunately, if it's a dead field, you're just going to have to leave it dead. Buy another well, or we're going to buy another well. It's going to cost us three million, and look at that. Because stores are in a chain, they line up, and it's not going to cost us too much more to drill for that, which is fantastic. It's only going to cost us a little bit. And look at that, there's no deviation whatsoever because it's on the shoreline and we're going down through water. So that's definitely one of the advantages of building things on the water, but you'll still have to get ready for the bottom of the ocean. That's fantastic. One oil well's dried up, but another one's been bought, and it didn't cost us a fortune, although we now only have half of the six million that we had before. And definitely, if you have six million in the bank, that's the ideal prime time to ship out to another country and get an oil field built out there. And no, oh no, there's another oil field burning in Alaska, and there's another contract offered in Alaska. Let's just ignore that contract for now, and let's sell it on our own. And so if you accept a contract, I think you don't have to go through the pain of the mini game trying to sell your oil, but of course you have to supply that in the first place. that we were absolutely nowhere near that blast but it killed us anyway and that's one of the things about this game it can do that you have to run every single pixel away from that blast because if you're too near it you'll just die and that's one of the negative parts that I found out about this game you can't hesitate when you plant that dynamite you have to run away very very quickly otherwise you get blown up so that's one of the downsides of this game and so let's move on let's see how much more money we've got look at that ready cash now the capital is on our side we're now leading the way as far as capital and hopefully with one million in the bank let's sell the oil and again if you buy too many oil fields in the same region it will devalue your oil and you might notice that we have three fields in a the line there that's fantastic because they work together and it means that they help support each other, but it also means that they devalue each other's oil. So even though it's now cheaper, cheap as chips now, to drill in Canada, because we have that three lined up, that lateral corporation, we've now got the muscle in Canada to buy whatever we want, as cheap as we want. And, well, in Alaska, that is and unfortunately that means that from now on the oil is going to be devalued and you can see we only got a little bit we're not on the six million we're now on three million because slowly we've built too many oil fields and slowly that value is being devalued And so this is the very first time I've played this game and I had a very quick warm up just to make sure that I knew what everything did. And it's very different to what I imagined. You can see the cover art is a kind of Miami Vice simulator with golden ladies and helicopters and skyscrapers and oil rigs. And what you actually get is a simulator which is on a number of screens and could have been coded in Amos. But forgetting about all oh, that, this is style over substance, and what style there is, it has got some charm with those mini games. And by the well, it's only cost us a million quid now to buy the wells, and that's fine because we haven't got that much to spare. And the other wells are drying up, but you can see, look at that, we crashed, and that means, unfortunately, guess what, we don't get anything for that, that's a waste of money. And we didn't drill anything.
At this point, we're now trying to desperately sell the oil. We've still got 2,000 barrels of it left. And that's the good news, but the profit is less than a million. That's the bad news. Having spent a million, every single well that we build is devaluing the profit from the others. So even though it's cheap now to buy in Alaska, unfortunately for me, that is practically worthless now that I've saturated that market. So around about some time at this point, you will find that I will go for somewhere else on the map, hopefully because devaluing the market like this isn't amazing and you can see the green ones I think are either not working or broke so it looks like we are trying again with the last one and there's precious little oil down there for us to drill so that would seem a bit of a waste of time at this point but I will just mention that the coders of this game didn't really go on too much but the graphics artist Tobias Richter, he went on to the German design group and helped create the graphics for Conquestador in 1992 on the Amiga. And Conquestador was a colonization clone from a German group imitating the Spanish conquest of the world. So, German Spanish colonization game. And so, that was. Well, nobody really knew about that and that got mostly a low score So you can see that the producers of this game built this on the fly and black gold was the name of this in America You can see we're losing money, but that's not to be confused by black gold another black gold Which I think was created by blue byte software. So there are two black gold games on the Amiga so what can we do? We're now in debt. We've now got 465,000 barrels and that's barely going to scrape us over, what, 3.7 million. That is actually not too bad at this stage. And at random, it means the workers are not rioting at this point. So randomly we get that cash. That's fantastic. And Explorer is yet again on fire. That's fantastic for us. So at this point, with 3.4 million in the cash bank, and we're now out of debt. Hopefully we can explore somewhere else. So let's check out Europe. And you might think that none of these areas have great oil in there. Let's go for North Britain. Let's see, it's going to cost us a whopping 3.5 million quid to buy it. A million quid to run it, and 150,000 credits. Per barrel. Well, this was 1989, so that definitely would be pounds we're talking about. Unless we're talking about France, and then it's the franc, and Austrians francs, and peseta is for Spain, and Germany. This When this came out, of course, this cost pfennigs, and pfennigs is pence in Germany. So, pfennigs this cost. So, Let's see now, before we move into France, we're going to have to buy ourselves some more barrels, some more tanks. So let's just buy ourselves a couple of the cheapest. And hopefully one million barrels worth is definitely enough. So there's no concession, it's the first time that we're going to drill here. So we're going to have to buy that two million quid. And sorry, we haven't got enough money. So the last dregs that we've managed to get from Alaska, and before anybody else moves into this area, because don't forget the computer will be taking over the rest of the world at this point. What we're actually going to do is oh, transoil in flames. Are we going to go for that? Yes, it looks like. Sorry, you can't do it on your own. So it looks like somewhere along the line. We've managed to kill the guy that put out the flames. And that's very easy to do. And that means that none of the oil fields will now be saved. They'll just have to burn to the ground. Let's skip that turn. One oil well has dried up. One oil field is burning to the ground. So 
So hopefully after this it gives you an idea of how to play the game and there are only a few screens that you really need to worry about. Just like Hannibal that we played, it's one of those screen based games where you can just click on things and click on things and occasionally you pick up that controller for the mini games. So now that a few of our oil fields have burnt down, that's actually increased the value of the price of oil in Alaska, which is fantastic. That gives us two million, which is just enough, hopefully, to drill in the place that we found in France. And it's saying we can't drill here because we haven't bought the land. So we'll have to buy the land first. We'll have to pay the concession, then buy the oil field. So you have to do everything by the book in this game and so I didn't realise that there was so much oil available in southern France but because we're the only ones here well look at that it's going to cost us 1.5 million to get the computer to do it let's buy that because for the sake of this review it's not going to do anything it's just going to skip the part where we drill the oil and of course it's always 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 paramount that you do it yourself and then that saves you a fortune and spending 1.6 million just to drill that for free is basically a waste of cash because look at that now we've wasted so much money we're now in debt and that's not very good it forces us to sell our remaining oil so after all that we've only got 62 barrels but look at that right some problems with the workers but it's worth a fortune because we are the only people in Europe so definitely if you spread out all the way around the world and you manage to get yourself in prime locations before the computer it means that you can milk these areas with only three oil wells in each get the prime money out of all of them and then once they run dry you can buy yourself another three and another three and spread out around the world and that's fantastic but at the moment we are having to deal with those defeats and it's a shame that we can't sell the oil fields that we had on the go already so that's as far virtually as I'm going to get with this game. Let's explore the Middle East. You might think that that's really expensive, but it isn't. It's the same cost to survey it. It's the same cost to buy it. The same cost to run it. Well, it's actually very cheap, actually, to run it. Less than $2,000. And we're going to get 74000 per barrel. So that's actually good value in the Gulf region. So if we wanted to do that, that's actually fantastic value, but we don't seem to have that cash available. But 1.8 million, it costs us two to go into a new territory. So while I stroll over that, we'll go to those scores. Amiga Action, who usually gives these games the highest score, gave it the lowest at 62%. Amiga Format, similarly, gave this 66%. Your Amiga awarded Oil Imperium 78%, Dato Magazine awarded this 80%, Amiga Computing gave it a reasonable 82%, Ace awarded this 83 the current Lemon Amiga score is 83 and also Zero gave this a typical 84%, CU Amiga gave this a fantastic 85% and lastly Amiga User International OI gave this an incredible 89% I don't think it deserves 89% because the graphics aren't too much to write home about the graphics aren't amazing, the music isn't amazing the sound effects aren't amazing either, the sub games aren't amazing but it has got charm you can see we're now still second by Explorer second in the line and investment capital we are above everybody and so that's fantastic and so it's the best of three years that we've selected but I'm not going to continue very far with this year because I've made so many mistakes already buying in Alaska you can see half of them are on fire half of them have run dry and we've only got two oil wells that are actually doing anything and drilling anything and when we try to sell them it doesn't actually give us anything which is perhaps a bug in the game I'm not quite sure and so 1.8 million I've no idea but it doesn't appear like we get any money for that and that's one of the comments that I noticed on that Lemon Amiga website 
maybe when we finish our turn we then spend a million on expenses and so we get that back with the sale but I don't really think that that's happening because we've only got 1.2 million in the bank so I'm not sure whether that's a bug or whether it isn't but the magazine reviewers gave this pretty middle of the road score from 65 to 89 but that means that this game is worth an average score of 8 out of 10 I think that some parts of this game are well done but some parts appear unfair definitely when it's an easy ride for the computer on that mini game it's difficult for us and it's pretty unwieldy getting used to that interface and of course when we get blown up by standing one pixel too close to a fire in a burning oil field so it has got problems but it has got charm as well I've never played this before, I'm probably never going to play it again, this is my first and only time playing it, so it looks like we've managed to recover, look at that, trans oil, trans soil, and yes, we are our techno group, this is trans oil techno group, we've got 3 million money, 3 million credits, so before we end this review, I'll go through a couple of other buttons, what else can we do? Well, in the top secret files, we can put people on the job. You can see special agents can be hired, and they can be hired for one month, two months, three months, or four months, and it will go up. The more you hire those guys, and you can sabotage things as well. So we can hire a saboteur for up to four months and that costs a million quid for four months of sabotage let's click on that it gives us a nice cutscene so there are cute animations in the game fantastic which company do you want to sabotage well explorer is probably the one that we should have gone for and object sabotage their oil drums their finances the oil wells or we can bribe somebody i think that's the last one so let's sabotage the oil market that's the second one and so we can sabotage things in this game let's check out the balance and from here we get all the stats that anybody could need for the oil wells the oil tanks and controller i've no idea what that contract oh yeah contracts that we have as well so yep yeah, all of the stats are in the game just like a civilization game so there is depth available and you can send out detectives for two months and agents for three months to blow things up for sabotage stuff and that's all very fun and it takes this above the level of a text adventure which it basically is so all those people that love this type of game i hope this has introduced you to a very well it seems easy at the start but you can recover from mistakes very easy type of point and click game which does have some character and some charm on offer so thank you for viewing this review thank you blocky man for sponsoring this review <laughs>